you can open delay 3 and it looks great at the moment. Number one, using EQO as a mixing tool. So I have these two synthesizers playing in here. And I am using EQO as an equalizer, but I am using this panning section. So what this basically does is, you can take certain frequencies, like I did here, at around 1.2k. I dipped these frequencies down, but this just means if we solo this track. You can see what happens when we dip all the frequencies down. We are panning the sound to the left. So now, what I wanna do is I wanna pan just these frequencies in here, slightly to the left. And now I have this other sound in this other channel. From here, I wanna keep the main fundamental sound in the middle, but I wanna pan the high frequencies to the opposite channel of this one to create depth to the mix. Number two. This tip has everything to do with making your sounds more analog and alive. So let's say you did go to my website and you bought my newest serum pack and you think these sounds are not unique enough. What you can do in FL Studio, you can open delay 3 and it looks great at the moment. So, to the, to the tip, we are going to use the delay tree as a modulation unit. So, let's play the sound, and I'm just gonna turn the time down, turn the level down, turn the dry signal all the way down. Now, we basically can use, for example, this filter in here. But this is not fun, we do have filters in every single place in FL Studio, but what we can do is we can use this modulation to listen to the sound and what happens. Now to go even further, what we can do is we can take a peak controller and let's link this Rate knob to the LFO actually. Number three. Let's say you have been dropping your folders inside this browser section. So what I usually like to do is I keep my FL Studio and my operating system, of course, in SSD drives. And I have some HDD storage drives that I usually use to storage my samples and stuff like this. So I usually just go to my storage drive and drop the folder in here. So this is a shortcut to the actual HDD drive. And I can browse my samples from here. Just fine, it works, and um, it's all good. But let's say this shortcut is empty. I deleted the files because, let's say, I didn't need those files anymore. How I can remove this 
annoying shortcut from the browser. If I click this, there is no option. If I go here, nothing happens in this case. <laughs> and um, it, it's, it's so annoying. So you can remove this by going into the file settings. And as you can see in here, you can see my Hedgeon tunes, the sounds of madness, which is this one. And this is the best drums in the world folder. And this can be found here. So double click it, just remove this text. And now when I press enter, close this, it is going to disappear. So that is how you delete these shortcuts. Number four, the channel rack. How to get more organized in channel rack. Let's say I wanna make a group for this synth. I press Alt G. Now we have a synth group in here. Let's go back to the unsorted. Select the bases. Back to unsorted. This is important. Now notice if we go to the all section, we have six different channels in here. When we go to the unsorted sections, only unsorted channels are the drums. So let's make a drum group. Now what happens is the unsorted section disappears completely and li life is not that linear. Of course it is nice to have these things on these different buses and the first case is this. Somebody adds a new sample to the all section and now as you can see the unsorted section suddenly shows back up again like what's up and um, the reason is because this particular channel or sample is actually unsorted so now if i press alt g let's drop this into the base group again the unsorted channel disappears and um, our kick is in the base group uh, life is still not that linear because let's say there is a situation where you want to take your synth number two and you want to remove it from the synth section but how do you do it actually well the answer is really simple as you can see there is no unsorted section in here and i want to put this back into unsorted so what i do alt g and i just type unsorted now if we go to all, we can see all of the samples. Since we can see only the synth number one. Unsorted, we can see the synth number two in here. And just to prove my point, now if I add a new sample and I go to the unsorted section, the new sample also appears in here. So this is how you use this channel rack feature. Number five. So I think this tip is pretty useful among the hip hop guys who like to use the channel rack a lot. So this is a quick tip. So let's say you have this annoyingly simple pattern and you right click here and you split it by channel. Now, as you can see, all of these different patterns are separated. If you want to glue these back together, just select them all and press Ctrl G. And now it is back to one single pattern. Number six. This one is pretty interesting. So I am using this plugin and I have this simple 90s style melody. It's cool and all, but um, I'd like to add some more movement to the sound. So one of the most interesting ways to do this is to use the keyboard controller. So what this thing does is it sends a note value to basically anywhere you want. Let's copy this MIDI over here, or you can just use the layer. And by the way, if you want to know how to move things around like this, just press shift 
hover your mouse over anything and use your scroll wheel to move things like this. So click this, select these, set children. Now when we play the layer, it is going to play everything. So now let's say I want to move this EQ band around with this information what we got over here. How I'm going to do this is pretty simple. I am using a XY controller and now you just need to bear with me. This signal can be sent straight to this knob in here. But I want to limit the signal with XY controller. So what I'm going to do is I am going to take this frequency, link to controller, and here you can see the EQ signal limiter, and this is a XY controller, as you can see here. I just named it clearly. I'm going to select the Y because this is in stock settings. So now we are sending information from this XY controller to here, but as you can see, nothing happens because we need to send this signal from here inside the XY controller. As you can see, if I move this, the EQ moves and we can limit the range where this band can move. As you can see, we are at Y level 100 and if we change the range, I think you get the point. So this is the knob that we need to automate with the note value. So here we can select velocity or note. We want the note value and now You can smoothen this out by using this speed dial. And you can imagine endless different ways to use this trick. Number 7. So, inside Maximus, you can click on this master meet mode. Let's listen to this loop. Pretty bouncy, but um, we can make it even more bouncy. So mid master mode disables the low and high bands. As you can see, the mid and master bands are only once active, as the name of this mode suggests. So now what we need to do is we need to go to the mid band, go to the monitoring, and down with these sliders, find the kick, which is sitting right around here. Let's crank the pre-gain so we get about 9 dB of output. Now let's do some really rough compression. So that is one neat way of tweaking your loops and make them bounce a just little bit more. Number 8. This next tip has something to do with nice bell sounds. And those bell sounds are usually created with additive synthesizers in digital domain. Morphine is one of the 
easiest ways to create sounds like that. It it just looks so complicated. So I think people are not actually interested to learn this because if you want to make just simple bell sounds with morphine or additive synthesizers in general, this is all it takes. I have a reverb plugin in this mixer channel where this morphine is. So check this out. I play the sound. So I did reset the program and there is no sound because we haven't added any harmonics yet. So check this out. So this is a really basic example, but I think you get the point. So this amplitude section is just a section where you can decide the individual harmonics. If I select only the first harmonic like this, this is just a root note or fundamental tone, aka just sine wave. And by adding up harmonics, even or odd you can create really unique sounds just play around with this and after this you can go to the detune section where you can detune those individual harmonics to create more unique sounds number nine i have this really simple lead in 3x oscillator If we go to the miscellaneous functions, from here we can find echo delay slash fat mode. So what is this thing? This is a really interesting way of imitating delay and detune. So if I turn the fat mode on, time all the way down, let's turn this pitch knob just, just like 14 cents. You can barely see that the knob is turned. If we push the feed up, and let's play the sound. And you can see that 3x oscillator is playing more notes that I'm sending in with this MIDI. And this is the way how it is imitating detune. And we can imitate detune, but we can also, also imitate delay. So I'm going to disable fat mode. Let's enable ping pong. And um, now when we turn the feed up, we should get delay. And as you can see, there is no actual delay. It is just playing notes and trying to imitate how delay works. So that's pretty cool. And um, one little disclaimer if you use this feature. If you disable the fat mode and um, turn the time all the way down and just push this feedback up, you can actually blow up your speakers. It will get loud, so be careful with this. That's the reason when I turn the fat mode off, that it automatically resets the feed to zero, so you're not gonna blow up your speakers. So, yeah, 
Also, you have some presets in here, which is pretty crazy. Simpler times. Number 10. This last trick is pretty cool. I have this drum pattern going on. I want to add some reverb to the higher frequencies. The most simple way to do this is to open up your effects selector, open EQO, go to send section. I want to send only the high frequencies. Now I can use the sidechain to this track function to send the signal to my channel where I have my reverb plugin engaged with the dry signal turned all the way to zero. Now we can go here, select the reverb channel. If we mute the original channel, And the main pros of this technique are that you did see how fast it was done. And the second of all, of course, you can decide that um, do you want to send your signal to the other channel before distortion, for example. I am using this plugin as a distortion, so you know. So I wanted to send this signal before the distortion. So that's my last tip. Let me know what do you think about these different ways of working and these different techniques. And if you are interested, subscribe to the channel, check out my website, hgontunes.com. You can find my preset packs from there. And also, there is some free stuff for the hardcore heads. So, hopefully you liked the video and have a nice day.